to the left here, I have the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And what we know so far about this virus is that when the coronavirus infects one of your host cells, it uses a protein that is referred to as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, or RDRP, in order to replicate the virus's genome, and its genome is composed of RNA, and it needs to do this so that its viral progeny have genetic material so that when they go on to infect more host cells in the future, they have the appropriate biological information in order to code for their own proteins to make even more viral progeny. So RDRP, at the end of the day, is a critical protein that the SARS-CoV-2 virus needs in order to be a potent and effective virus. And so thus knowing that this is such a critical protein to this coronavirus, we can begin to figure out, well, what things can we use that can potentially inhibit or destroy or make this protein less effective? And this would help us control the rates of infections as well as how damaging this disease is. And so papers that were published many years ago that were studying the SARS-CoV-1 virus, and this is a cousin to the current coronavirus. This was the original SARS virus. What these papers found is that as they increased the levels of intracellular zinc, the amount of RNA that RDRP was able to create was lowered, it was lessened. And so what we see is a very nice trend here is that as we increase the concentrations of intracellular zinc, we're getting less and less RNA that is able to be synthesized by the RDRP, that special protein. And so while this is great news, the problem is that in practice, if you were to take a bunch of zinc supplements, the zinc ions that would now be present in your body have a very hard time getting into your cells because your cells have something referred to as a plasma membrane. And the plasma membrane doesn't like things that are very positively charged or negatively charged and are big molecules. So the zinc 2 plus ion is this big thing that the plasma membrane is basically going to shove away. It doesn't want to let these ions in to your cells. And so taking zinc supplements isn't necessarily going to solve the problem here. What you need is something to help get these zinc ions into these cells. How do you push these zinc ions into the cells when the plasma membrane doesn't want that to happen? And the answer is to turn to things referred to as zinc ionophores. And so chloroquine and also hydroxychloroquine have been shown in other academic papers to facilitate this process, to make easier the transfer of the zinc ions from outside of the cells into the cells so that we can essentially increase the intracellular concentration of zinc to inhibit the activity of RDRP, hopefully. And so molecules like chloroquine are able to help a lot more zinc ions get into your cells. And so an additional paper that came out a few years ago was studying how effective chloroquine is at pushing zinc into cells. And so if we look at the top graph here, what we're going to see is that at a concentration of zero chloroquine, the amount of zinc, when we had five micromolar of zinc, which is the concentration present outside of the cells, we had this concentration of zinc. And if we were to eyeball this, we could call this around 10. And so what happened is when we introduced 10 micromolar of chloroquine, the levels of zinc, when we kept the intra uh, or in vitro concentration outside of these cells constant, is that the concentration of zinc inside of the cells nearly tripled very quickly. So what this means is that the chloroquine was able to essentially get nearly three times the amount of zinc into the cells, and that is because it is acting as a zinc ionophore is what this paper is suggesting. And so what the authors also did is they were able to use the fluorescence of zinc in order to help us visualize the presence of zinc inside of these cells. And so what we see is when we have 50 micromolar of zinc outside of the cells, this is the kind of fluorescence that we see. And to the image to the right of it, what we see is that when they introduce the concentration of chloroquine into the mix, so zinc plus chloroquine, results in the 
massive uptake of zinc into cells. So you can see how much brighter this thing is, even though despite the fact that it has a lower concentration of zinc. So basically the message at the end of the day is that chloroquine, which is abbreviated CHQ, facilitates the uptake of zinc plus plus or two plus ions into cells. So that's point number one. And then point number two is that zinc plus plus inhibits, sorry, RDRP of SARS-CoV-1. So the big questions here that we have to answer, and this is what we're currently working on in our clinical trials, is for SARS-CoV-1, fantastic. More zinc means that its RDRP is less effective. But is that also the case with SARS-CoV-2? Because these are not the same virus. And so that is a huge question that we have to answer here. So what about CoV-2? So we're currently, we the jury is still out on this and there are papers and people trying to figure this out right now. And then in addition to that, how safe is chloroquine? And chloroquine, we need to make a note of, is a prescription medication. And the reason it's a prescription medication is that a physician needs to be aware of the other health conditions and confounding variables that are in a patient who it may take chloroquine. And the reason for this is that people with pre-existing health conditions, specific types of pre-existing health conditions, as well as other types of confounding variables like other medications that are currently being taken, if the doctor prescribes chloroquine, this can have severe side effects that can result in death. And specifically, this would be cardiac arrhythmia. So chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are not medications you would take over the counter. These are things where you would need a certified healthcare professional who knows your medical history to prescribe this to you because this is a dangerous medication that has other side effects besides just making your cells plasma membrane more porous to zinc ions. It's gonna be doing other things that your doctor needs to be aware of and you need to have these discussions. So what we need to happen is number one, do clinical trials, double blind clinical trials to see if the combination of zinc and the hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine is a safe, and effective means to treat COVID-19. And then once we've established this fact, then we can actually begin to move on and determine if treating COVID-19, which is the SARS-CoV-2 virus, not the SARS-CoV-1 virus that the previous paper have, has been talking about, to see if this is a safe treatment for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And so that is gonna wrap things up for this video. I hope it helps. Thank you all for watching. Please stay safe, wash your hands. I'm gonna leave links to the two documents or the two papers in the description of this video so that y'all can check out these papers because they are excellent work and it is promising stuff right now. I And I'll talk to you next time.